Now build defenses around the power collector, because enemies will attack it when you activate it. Activated. Now defend the Atlas until the gate has been closed. Embarrassing. Maverick, skirmisher. Bottoms up. You want some more, asshole? Chronos, Titan.카드 배틀을 벌일 수도 있고 맥주 마시기 승부 같은 소소한 경쟁도 즐길 수 있습니다. 이곳은 콜로세움입니다. 콜로세움은 부와 명예를 걸고 싸우는 혈투의 전장이죠. 플레이어는 이곳에서 자존심을 건 1대1 대결을 펼칠 수 있습니다. 팀원 간의 호흡이 중요한 3대3 전투도 할수 있죠. 도전하는 자만이 승리의 영광을 누릴 수 있습니다. 모험을 하며 갈고 닦은 실력을 보여주세요. 이번엔 마을을 떠나 필드로 한번 나가볼까요? 필드에서는 생활에 필요한 자원을 모으거나 몬스터를 사냥하여 희귀한 재료를 얻기도 합니다. 플레이어들의 움직임이 심상치 않습니다. 이 거대한 몬스터 때문이었고 필드에서는 이렇게 예측할 수 없는 일들이 벌어지기도 합니다. 긴장을 늦추지 마세요. 이번엔 슈샤이어 북부의 빙하 계곡으로 옮겨가 보죠. 어쩌면 악마들을 상대했을 때가 행복했다고 생각하실지도 모르겠습니다. 설원지대의 지배자, 베르투스를 만난다면 말이죠. 이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이
Now here is the jewel in the High King's Crown, mighty Karaz Akarak itself. Also known as Everpeak, this glittering city with its rich gemstone mines stands testament to dwarf and engineering might and marks the stout heart of our growing kingdom. We've been focusing on its civic development and one result of this is a very tough garrison consisting of grudge throwers, quarrelers, thunderers and a wall of elite defenders in the shape of longbeards and hammerers as well. And these guys are also, as you can see, partial to puking acid bile all over their enemies. bit of aerial combat going on here between Deathclaw and the Wyvern. Now if you gain mastery of the skies in a battle like this, you can then use the maneuverability of your flying units to strike pretty much anywhere on the battlefield. And as the Wyvern comes down here to, to attack these state troopers, you can see how each of these big monsters has some really spectacular combat animation. in a solar system rife with conflict. You will team up with four other captains to battles in deep space or inside the atmosphere of planets to earn fame, glory, and your own fleet of ships. In order to be an effective commander, you need to know the fleet inside and out. It's not enough to know your favorite class. You've got to know your enemy and know which ship will be the most effective in burning them to the ground. Users do their best work at extreme range, delivering deadly salvos from heavy weapon batteries. Think of the artillery cruiser as a sniper. The ship is big guns strapped onto a quick engine with almost no heavy armor, making it one of the most vulnerable flyers in the fleet. The artillery cruiser does its best work lurking in the outskirts of battle, spotting targets for teammates and taking out enemy vessels from afar. Bulky dreadnoughts are plum targets for artillery cruisers. Lining up the perfect shot can be tricky, especially when quick ships like the Corvette manage to get too close for a ship in your arsenal. Dual front-mounted heavy autocannons and the Blink Warp Drive allow Corvette captains to make deadly, surgical, hit-and-run strikes and wreak havoc on the enemy. 
Corvettes are scouts, running recon and delivering quick strikes. High speed and the warp jump ability make them perfect for hunting down pesky artillery cruisers. But Corvettes may fall prey to the massive firepower of the destroyer if they aren't careful. The sweet spot between the massive dreadnought and the agile Corvette. This all-around attack ship is loaded with firepower, making it the ultimate medium-range hunter. At range, destroyers should stay clear of the artillery cruiser's line of sight. A direct hit can prove devastating. In close quarter battles, destroyers are tough enough to handle their share of fire. Their role is to dart in and cut up the support craft, like the tactical cruiser, leaving larger, more dangerous ships without defenses. And when they're caught in a corner, or on the offensive, they are more than capable of causing some damage, especially against wily corvettes. In darkness, I shall be light. In times of doubt, I shall keep faith. of rage, I shall hone my craft, in vengeance, I shall have no mercy. seamlessly switch between cooperating and competing depending on the situation you're in. So Here what is your the Divinity Original Sin 2 prototype, built on top of the Divinity Original Sin Enhanced Edition engine. It's still very much work in progress and lots of things will change, but it's already sufficient to demonstrate a couple of the key things that we're able to use to talk to an NPC. Now the interesting thing is that in this example the Dwarven Thief are being controlled not by me but by Thomas, and it so happens to be that Thomas wants to help the Dwarves in this village whereas I'm determined to demonstrate that dwarves should know their place. While eventually fate may bring us together again, for the moment we're working on the conflicting sides of the narrative, and we're trying to use the advantages of our origin stories, as well as our skills, abilities and talents to try to get the upper hand. So the story that we've made for Divinity Original Sin 2 makes all of these things possible, and mixed with all the RPG systems that we have, it really makes for a lot of fun. So here you see me mixing a red coloring herb with a poison potion, and this is me putting it in Thomas's backpack. So when he's going to drink it, he's going to have a little bit of a surprise. Now here you see me telling the guards that Thomas is a criminal and that he is smuggling contraband, which happens to be the case. So the guards are going to ask to investigate his inventory and they're going to fall on the contraband and they're going to take Thomas to jail. 
And here you see me backstabbing him. Thomas has just finished an epic fight and he's very weak. And so that's a perfect opportunity for me to say to Thomas, Thomas, I don't like you anymore. So obviously all of this is great in multiplayer, but it also makes for a much stronger single player experience. Allowing for both cooperative and competitive narrative gameplay forces us as developers to implement plenty of options. And in single player, that means that there's a great many choices to make. That's a lot of role-playing right there, and our ambition is to go very far with it. But obviously that's not our only ambition. Divinity Original Sin's combat system was one of the highlights of the game, and development in Divinity Original Sin 2 will be focused on maintaining the same feel while expanding on the things that you can do and the challenges you'll be encountering. We're going to try to bring you more skills, talents, abilities as well. Oh, did he? Yeah. <laughs> he's, he's out of there. There he is. There he is. Tactically passive, individually uh, suicidal. Wait, wait. <laughs> <laughs> he's, yeah, he's really... He's doing all right, actually. Yeah, he's yeah, yeah, yeah. We're just trying to take him down. I totally lost him, by the way. We have, like, interesting other AI um, uh, features here as well. So, like, um, uh, the troops, if, if they are sort of, they, they feel that they're being drawn too far away from their formation, they'll, like, run back into it and they'll feel like they need to self-preserve and right. kind of stay alive. So they won't just break, break up the formation for no reason? No, exactly. Uh, but obviously, if we send archers forward, they pretty much have to follow that, that command. And, yeah. uh, <laughs> they are all going to they, they were, like, lambs to the slaughter, essentially. Yeah. Okay, so we're doing, we're doing pretty okay, I think. I think the, the, the slight number of archers we had and the, the troops... Shields full. Shields charging, scanning, bogey.
Quantum Drive activated. Quantum Drive activated. Quantum Drive deactivated. Deactivated.